to look as if they're doing something. So don't accuse anyone else of stoking culture wars. Such as the smoke and mirrors of, of politics. Ruminating and fulminating and debating and voting and God knows what. Said they couldn't back the party's position. But the government has got to be more flexible. It's starting to sound like a very expensive show, this, but anyway. <laughs>
Uh, I want it to be compassionate but not uh, encourage the lazy. I don't want it to have open borders that allows any Tom, Dick or Harriet to come. I want to get rid of all the woke nonsense that, uh, frankly, is an utter waste of time. Um, and I do want to have a national health service that works, but not one that is a religion. A national broadcaster that we can celebrate rather than count out to. Um, what else would I like to see? Yeah, police who do things. And can we stop with stupid 20 mile an hour speed limits? And I want nice big roads that we can drive on and not too many people. I don't want a lot, do I? I mean, I didn't necessarily put them in an order. I just kind of thought of them. But there's a bit of me that says, you know, all these experiments with all these other leaders. And I know that Boris Johnson did a lot of stupid things and uh, he was given a goal. He made the goal bigger and then he kept firing uh, balls into his own goal, left, right and centre. Time and time again, he made mistakes. He put the wrong people. It's like, no, Boris, I will not allow your chief of staff to do these things. He didn't lead from the front and he made terrible errors. But what he did do, he did two things. He won elections and he also came up with big policy. He was able to give that grand vision as to where we should be heading. Look, Donald Trump, he could be coming back to the White House after the most dismal performance last time around. I mean, it could happen. We could see a rerun. Could the Tories be better off with Boris as leader? I mean, it couldn't be any worse, could it? And it disappoints because Rishi Sunak, he's a, he said, I'm sure he's a man with integrity. Uh, I, think he's, uh, I think he's quite bright. I think there are all sorts of things about him which are great personal qualities in the same way that I look at Keir Starmer and think he's a decent individual. He just had no inspiration or leadership skills. What the heck is going wrong with this country that we can't even find a leader or a prime minister who's got any kind of leadership skills whatsoever? I want a vision and then to lead, lead by example, which is what Boris didn't do, which is why he had to go in the end. But it disappoints me. You know, it's just like here you've got the, the, the cleverest child in the class and they do dismal in their exams. Anyway, I've done enough ranting. I want to hear from you. Is it time to think the unthinkable? Could the Tories be better off with Boris as leader? 03444991000 or have I just lit the touch paper to irritating you beyond belief? <laughs> it could happen too. Uh, also, if you want to review the newspapers, do get involved and there's plenty uh, for you to say. Let's kick off with uh, Lenny, who is in Ashford. Lenny, good morning. Good morning, James. Uh, good morning. So is it time to think the unthinkable? Bring Boris back. Well, I don't think so. Oh. Not me personally, because... What did he achieve? Well, he won them an election. I mean, that's quite an achievement. Yes, he won the election, but when we was all in a desperate thing with Brexit... He got Brexit. Well, he got Brexit done. No, he didn't, James. No, as in he got the he, vote through. He, he, never got, he never got Brexit done. And if he had not, if he had not sided... If, well, that's as maybe. If he had not sided with the Brexiteers uh, during that referendum... Chances are they wouldn't have won. Uh, well, that, that is hypothetical, isn't it? It is. Uh, but you know yeah, I'm right. You know, but no, I don't think you are, James. Oh, come on. If Boris Johnson hadn't allied with uh, the, the Brexit-leaving uh, mob... He, look, anyway, let me, let me talk to you about the genesis for this um, uh, uh, comment this morning. On the front page of today's Times newspaper... Sir Keir Starmer has praised Boris Johnson's mission to level up Britain and accused Rishi Sunak of killing the policy. The Labour leader launching his party's local election campaign today by pledging to tackle the uh, alienation and powerless across much of the country. And he has written in The Times with uh, Starmer and Angela Rayner, uh, the deputy leader, writing together for the first time. Well, I mean, politics, I mean, all's... Uh, all's uh Starmer is doing is driving a wedge between the, the Conservatives, which is his job, isn't he? Well, I suppose so. Uh, and, and that is it. I mean... So do you think I that mean, Keir Starmer is saying Starmer this? Is Keir Starmer saying this? Because he knows that there are Boris Johnson supporters and he knows that there are people who can't bear him. Yeah, well, that is it. I mean, all Starmer is doing is, is, 
is creating anarchy within oh. the Conservative Party. I don't and think I don't is, think you need Keir job. Starmer to create the anarchy within the Conservative Party. They're doing a pretty good job themselves. Totally, I will agree with you on that point. Excellent. And, and that is it. But but what he is doing, I mean, he's doing what every opposition leader should be doing. And uh, and if you look at it, that I mean, if 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 uh, Boris said to me. Uh, good morning, I would look at me watch to see if he's telling the truth. Wow. How can, um, you, how can you have a leader who, who lies as often as he does? Well, they all do. Well, that's the problem. That that's, the, that's the problem. Anyway, pick a newspaper for me, Lenny. Uh, let's have the uh, Daily Express, James. Right. Uh, here's the Daily Express. You can have a number between 1 and 60. Uh, 27, James. Oh, you really are delving deep. Yeah, we'll try and find a decent story. Oh, it's as if you couldn't make it up. Look at this. What place in North Essex is mentioned in the double-page spread of the Daily Express? Well, is, is it anything to do with your uh, ten games? Is it anything to do with my what? Your tennis club, where you frequent there? Uh, sadly not. However, it's an article which is headed The Pirate King of Frinton-on-Sea. It was about three quarters up the uh, mast of the ship when I suddenly stopped and began to think, what the hell am I doing? I'd only climbed up because the boss of Radio Caroline, Ronan O'Reilly, uh, promised he'd give me £25 if I could get up there and remove a bit of cable that was preventing the station from broadcasting. Yes, this is the story of Tony Blackburn looking fondly back on his early career DJing from three miles off the coast of Essex, uh, indeed just off the coast uh, by Frinton-on-Sea. And look, there it is. Love the Blackburn. And, of course, he's reviewed the papers on, on this show on, on a number of occasions. Well, you know, he, he he's been a, he's been part of our lives for many years, James. Hasn't he was, he? you know, the first voice on on the radio one. He was, yeah, yeah, and nice to see him keep going. Nice I agree. To see him keep going. A thoroughly totally a thoroughly entertaining gentleman and a really interesting story there. Clash of the Pirate Show uh, with Tony Blackburn and Johnny Walker airs on the BBC. And I dare say it's available on their app thing, if that's what you were interested in. However, double page spread, the Pirate King of Frinton-on-Sea. Well done, Lenny, for picking that. I, I, brilliant stuff. And also for starting our conversation. So, I seem to have annoyed you this morning, so I'm so sorry. Uh, it is a Thursday morning, and what could be better? Could the Tories be better off with Boris as leader, is what I'm asking. I mean, it's kind of got to that, hasn't it? 03444991000. Uh, David is in Glasgow. David, morning. Morning, James. I hope you're well. I am very well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, all is well. It's been a very busy week, David. Yes. I think the question that you have there, could, could Boris Johnson be, you know, and effectively... The, the question you raised, well, one of the things you said at the beginning was vision. And this is the critical thing. I don't think Boris Johnson ever had vision. I think he had political desires, you know, but never really any vision. Oh, no, I, 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 th I think the one thing Boris Johnson has... All the stuff about the lying and the integrity and lack of what I would describe as local leadership and a lax style to, um, and, and also an inability to pick the right team and, and also has an interesting relationship with the truth sometimes. All of that stuff I get. But when it comes to vision, I think he had a really good vision for Britain on the uh, global stage, for Britain on the national stage. Uh, he's really good at coming up with ideas, bonkers ideas for infrastructure. Um, you know, it was him who started the whole conversation about whether Heathrow really is in the right place. And given that it's owned by a whole range of foreign investors, perhaps it would be better if we had a, a national airport and a central hub that was owned maybe by uh, the nation itself. I mean, you know, there there are things like that that I think he, he did have good vision on, David. Yeah, OK, I would, I would agree with that. Yes, he probably would have done. But, you know... You said there are all the mistakes and issues that we had and the way that the, the country was led. And if you look at the, the COVID inquiry that's going on at the moment, and I've listened to some of the testimony from him in particular, you know, do we want to go back to that same kind of leadership? I, I, I don't think so. OK, so so you think that I've my, my, my rose-tinted rear-viewed spectacles... 
um, don't need to have Boris in their in their lives. But let's flip the coin then. And what about Penny Morgan? Penny what? Penny, Penny Morgan. Mordant. Mordant, sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you don't you even know. know. No. Here's the problem with Penny Mordant. Um, I, I do quite like her. I think she's an interesting lady. I think she's got a, a lot of uh, gumption, get up and go and all that sort of business. But when I've listened to her speak, and then when she did that whole, you know, when people stand up and fight and they'll you'll fight with them and then all this stuff, and I just thought, mm-hmm. what a... Terrible! I was going to say I was going to swear there. What a terrible speech! It's the sort of thing that somebody aspiring to be head girl or head boy of their school wanted would 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 do. It was a poor speech. What yeah, Boris I mean, is great at? He's a funny orator. He's a brilliant public speaker. Uh, he, you know, the whole chaos thing is is a, you know it's a political act, uh, but he's he's a brilliant orator. In the same way, look, I David Cameron, brilliant orator, Tony Blair. Brilliant orator, uh, Margaret mm-hmm. Thatcher. Brilliant orator, orator. and actually uh, Michael Hesitine, arguably the best prime minister we never had. Superb. Yeah, I mean your question there about Boris Johnson leads to the the kind of question of what's going to happen within the next few months. You know, when this election, and uh, it's going to be annihilation. That's what's going to happen. It is. I mean, let, let's not get into the, the detail of it, but in Scotland, at least we've got three possible parties you know you, you can look at the SNP the Labour and the Conservatives well you say that but they're all got their own problems <laughs> exactly that's what I'm saying I mean, the, SM, the SNP have imploded from from the exactly. outside yeah. uh, Labour Party um, I don't know it exists and you just think yeah but how and then the Conservatives have torn themselves to pieces exactly you know so this is this is the question do, 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 we, do we just have you know, Boris Johnson is a leader. What I mean, I just, I just don't know if he's going to make the Conservatives a winning party again. Well, I just, I just, I just wonder who else, who else can. However, before I get to uh, actually, no, what newspaper would you like, David? Uh, the Times, page three. The Times, page three. Then you may have the Times, page three. Oh, oh, oh. That's a good one. In November 2022, the scaffolding appeared outside Sumner Buildings near London's South Bank. Mm. Almost 18 months on, residents are resorting to black pepper, window nets and spatulas in their efforts to keep at bay the enterprising squirrels which have made the structure their home. The rodents are unafraid to use the scaffolding to break into flats, pilfer food and they've become a problem since the local authority put the structure up to replace windows in the historic block. So in Mm. come the squirrels. Unbelievable. (laughs) <laughs> Meanwhile, um, so can I just throw two stories at you? Uh, because we've got a lot of stories to get through today. Um, have you heard about the NHS boss who's been blasted? Uh, so this is Dr Andrew Kelso. He was in charge of hospitals in Suffolk and Essex. And it makes you wonder why he bothers turning up for work, why they're spending money on this individual and whether or not he's the right person to lead them. Because he said, I urge people to enjoy their Easter eggs in moderation, and he's the one who said don't eat them all in one go. Nanny and as a steak, get back to bed, go away. If I want to eat an Easter egg in one go, if I want to eat five Easter eggs, it's none of your business, Dr Kelso. Bog off. Exactly. Right. Meanwhile, do you call Easter eggs Easter eggs, David? Oh, don't start with that gender, whatever. I heard that. Gender oh. eggs. They're not oh. called gender eggs. <laughs> Daz in Barnsley. Hiya. Daz, uh, do you do you call Easter eggs Easter eggs? Of course they're Easter, Easter eggs. Easter eggs are Easter eggs in Barnsley, my friend. Right. Oh, hang on. Well, what do you make about this? This is a Cadbury discount store. It's been blasted for removing the word Easter from its advertising, naming their chocolates Jester eggs. Yes. Yeah, it, it's an absolute disgrace. Absolute disgrace. Daz, uh, we'll come back to you in a moment. David, uh, is it an absolute disgrace? Absolute disgrace, yeah, totally. Uh, Carberry said it was nothing to do with them, you know? Well, they can call them what they like. Yeah. But Easter eggs. Easter simple. eggs. Or chocolate eggs. Well, you only get them at Easter. Oh, <laughs> 
You'd be surprised how often uh, eggs pop up during the year, David. Uh, thank you very much indeed for your call. Uh, my call uh, for uh, to think the unthinkable isn't necessarily going very well this morning, uh, and that's OK, because I want to hear from you. It doesn't matter what I think, it matters what you think. Um, Labour leader Keir Starmer, front page of the Times newspaper, he and Angela Rayner have written an article praising Boris Johnson for the levelling up policy. So I'm trying to think of the unthinkable. Could the Tories be better off with Boris as leader? 0344 499 1000. That's the telephone number. We take more of your calls next here on Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kingston City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Whirl, is it? laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to it was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Five twenty-two is the time. Hello, good morning. It's me, James Max. Uh, I'm with you until six o'clock this morning uh, when it's Talk Today on Talk TV. Now I've been asking you about this. Four thousand six hundred plus people arriving on our shores in the first three months of this year in small boats. Prime Minister possibly forcing an election in the summer. That's what the front page of the Mail says because his party is falling apart, and he might have to do it then to stop it falling apart. But now the Labour leader Keir Starmer has praised. Boris Johnson and his levelling up policy uh, in a joint article with Angela Rayner uh, and I'm asking whether it's time to think the unthinkable. Could the Tories be better off with Boris as leader? 
0344 499 1000. Meanwhile, quite a lot of incoming over um, the double paid spread, which is in today's um, Express newspaper, talking about Frinton on Sea. It's not actually talking about Frinton on Sea, even though that's mentioned in the title. It's actually talking about the Radio Caroline and the fact that, uh, however many millions of years ago, Radio Caroline started on the Easter weekend. Um, Radio Caroline, I'm 63. Radio Caroline is part of my life in the days uh, and the eclectic taste of music and also the famous DJ. What a fantastic era, says Ian. Um, meanwhile, Mrs Donk <laughs> really <laughs> says, Good morning, James. You looked very smart last night on prime time. Bring back Boris, there's nothing to lose. Talking of prime time, I will be back uh, Monday to Wednesday next week for prime time. Tonight I'm on the talk at six o'clock. Um, it's all very complicated, but yes, so uh, there's there's more prime time from the Max. Um, James, Jimmy Cranbrook says, James, I thought you were wonderfully aggressive on prime time last night, particularly towards your panel. Have they been feeding you raw meat? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I was quite hungry, though, because I hadn't actually eaten since lunchtime. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm just storing up to eat that Easter egg in one go over the weekend. Um, hoping that Michelle with one L looks the other way. Michelle with one L has been advising on the defatting. Well, you know I've lost three and a quarter stone. I got too fat. It looked like somebody had blown me up with some kind of, like, air pump. Anyway, could the Tories be better off with Boris as leader is what I'm asking this morning. Daz, I'm sorry you've been having a hang on there. I was, I was just talking there. Good morning. Good morning, James. How are you? Uh, I'm very well, thank you. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. Hope you are too. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, Boris is leader, really? Come on. Well, I, I, I just wonder whether... It, the I, I, no, I, isn't it... Do, do you think the comment from the Labour leadership is, like, actually a little bit of a wind-up? Yeah, possibly. It's just that... Um, I. I'm disappointed by Rishi Sunak, and it's probably more Jeremy Hunt, because I think he's made the wrong choices as Chancellor. Um, I want a Tory Prime Minister that cuts tax... I want a Tory Prime Minister that understands the importance of law and order. I want a Tory Prime Minister that understands the importance of integrity of our borders. Uh, and I want yep. a Tory leader that puts Great Britain on the world map for uh, foreign affairs and for business. And also I want a uh, Tory leader that rewards uh, hard work and success. Yep, I, I totally agree. And I am... Um... I'm, I'm from a mining town. There's no way anybody can call me a Tory. Right? I'm, I'm, well, I'm not a, a follower of any particular party at the moment because I don't trust any of them. Well, I think that's the problem, them. isn't it? So what I'm looking for, Daz, exactly. is so, I'm looking so, for some so leadership. So I don't actually care where it comes from, but I just want a, a leader who demonstrates that they've got a vision and I want to buy into their vision in the way that... I didn't like but everything no. Margaret Thatcher did, but she certainly had a vision and arguably was one of the finest prime ministers this country's ever had. Well, not, not from where I live, she wasn't. Oh. Right, not from where I live, she wasn't. She definitely wasn't. Not in my part of this country. What did she do wrong right, in your, in so your that, part of the country? Well, I was a miner. So, are you thinking that so, with the so, green so, agenda... So, so, hang on, hang on. But are you thinking, though, that, Daz, with the green agenda, that the Labour Party would be any greater friend of miners than, <laughs> than, than the Tories? I mean... Hey, listen, listen, it's got nothing to do with that, James. What happened back in Margaret Thatcher's time was well, nothing to do with any green agenda. OK. No, it was to do with bashing the unions. No. Pardon? It was to do with bashing the unions. That's what she wanted exactly. to do. Exactly. So, right, so that's got nothing to do with the green agenda. No, 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 all I'm saying... So, it, so no, 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 that's not my point. My point, Daz, is that at the time Margaret Thatcher was using the miners and mining uh, as a way to clobber the unions, understood... In today's age, with Labour as it currently is, whether it's Ed Miliband uh, or indeed Keir Starmer, they absolutely would not be supporting the mining industry because they would be talking about the green agenda and saying we can't do it. No, the thing was... So either right, way, so, mining was doomed. Right, so, but it could have been done in a far stretched out way rather than bang all at once. Agreed. I, Daz, if I right, had my so way... It could have been done so that we could have had... We could have had regeneration sure. as pits closed down, which we didn't have. Sure. And if which if we had my have. way, Daz, we'd open up some of those pits and we'd make sure that we had a coal industry uh, that was uh, fueling uh, our economy and our manufacturing industry. 
Right, so we can all agree on that then. Yes. So that's because we know how many millions of tons of coal are still down there. Yes. Right, it's all still down there. It's all, it's all there for the future. When somebody I finally come to the conclusion that this total green, whatever it is, conspiracy is all proved to be wrong. Right. And then they can right. mine again. Fair enough. OK. And then they'll mine again and they'll ga- they'll, no gas and no oil and it will all go around in a big circle. But... Back to your thing, could the Tories be better off with Boris as leader? Yes. That question, right, really is, it shows how poor our uh, political system is today that we have two leaders and you're putting Boris back up against those two leaders. I mean, I, I, I agree with you, but then what does it say about the Western world when you have that state of affairs here in the UK and then in the US you have a rerun of the last election where you've got Joe Biden, where he's so old you wonder whether he's going to get to the end of his sentence, and Donald Trump, who, um, I mean, yeah, Donald Trump. I mean, that's but, the best the United but, States but, can do. But did you, uh, did you not ask me that we had Boris... Over here and Trump in America at the time. I know. Because I, I, I actually thought at the time if, um, what do you used to call that cartoon show that went out with the, with the caricatures on? Oh, I don't know which one. The, 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 the what, Spitting Image? Day. Yeah, they'd have had a field day. Well, they would have done. Spitting Image came back for a while. It was just sad that they lost it. Anyway, Daz, pick a newspaper for me. A lot of people want to have their say this morning. So which newspaper yep. would you like? What have we got? Well, you've got any one you want. Daily Mail. Oh, hang on. No, let's go for the wheel. The wheel is spinning. The wheel will choose you a newspaper. It's chosen you... Oh, my uh, uh, Oh, it's just on the... Uh, just... It's just chosen you the Daily Telegraph. Right. Are you what excited by that? No, oh, I'm extremely delighted. Right. Uh, OK, so... Um, pe- a, a number between that. 1 and 30... I'll go for 30, then. Oh, no, between 1 and 30. OK, 29. Oh. <laughs> That's probably wise, cos on the back they've got the weather and the crosswords. Oh, no, you got today's television. Really? Yeah, oh, look what they're showing. Oh, epic film well, from 1985. The Breakfast Club is on Comedy Central, five stars. John Hughes's 1980s smash centres on five desperate students stuck together in detention as they begin to realise that they're more than just stereotypes. The SWAT, which is Anthony Michael Hall, the jock, who's uh, Emilio Estevez, the basket case, who's Ali Sheedy, the princess, who's Molly Ringwald, and the rebel, who's Judd Nelson. Uh, The latter's uh, raised fist to uh, Don't You Forget About Me remains one of cinema's most glorious moments. Well, it sounds like one of my detentions, that, so... Yes. <laughs> so there you are. That's that's it's what you've got. 85. 1985. 1985. I, <laughs> I know. I was 15 years old and I thought it was an amazing film. I'm so old. I've never been this old. Uh, Daz, thank you so much for your call. I think it's a desperate... Oh, God, that's the wheel of... What the... Such a lot of took comes into this studio. You wouldn't believe it. Anyway, 0344 499 1000. I don't know what's happening today. I think the wheels have fallen off. We must be heading towards a bank holiday. Uh, let's go to Peter, who's in Manchester. Peter, good morning. Good morning, James, yes. I've, uh, I, I, yes, seem I, have, I seem to have... I seem to have... Boris ignite... Johnson would do a better job. Sorry, who? I think Boris Johnson would make a better Prime Minister. Oh. Because you're the, he's a born leader. You're the first person who's called in to say that, Peter. Well, I'm a bit odd. <laughs> you know what I felt about the war. <laughs> you last time. You know, I mean, I'm a realist, you know, and I know that, you know... A, David Cameron was Boris Johnson's his bag at, at, at the university at Eton. Um, at, you Eton know, is Boris certainly Johnson not a university. Was a, scholar, was a top scholar. And I think he was misled by Matt Hancock and all this other thing. Well, does, know, it show, does it show, Peter, that Boris Johnson was, uh, for all his brilliance, was unable to pick a team and put them around him because he was uh, slightly uh, fragile uh, and uh, therefore didn't pick error, the best... Yeah. He didn't pick the best that he had. Well, no, he put Witchy Chris near him and, 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 the, and the other Joe Blog, you know, with, with COVID. And, uh, you know, we were established it wasn't as serious as anything like they made it out to be. No. That's put us into massive financial debt. And he was going along with them because 
he was being misled. Well, I, I think, to be fair, before COVID arrived and, and given what was happening in Italy and, and indeed further yeah. east, uh, I, I think they had to do something. Uh, anyway, Peter, um, which newspaper would you like this morning? I would like The Times oh. and uh, I'll have uh, seven. Of course. Uh, no, nine. Nine. Oh, I was all getting my paddles out. No, no, don't, don't, don't get the paddle out, James. It's too much effort. <laughs> Oh. Sunak. Prime Minister's job was a hospital pass, but the future is brighter. Rishi Sunak has said that he inherited the worst hospital pass of any incoming Prime Minister in decades in an interview with Lord Hague of Richmond for the New Times podcast, The Story. Sunak said that voters were clearly frustrated. However, he said the country was turning a corner and that people will soon feel better off. Yeah, and he's going to plot Stephen Nick Fogg. I'm sorry, what? He stabbed Boris in the back. He's going to plot Stephen Nick Fogg. He's a, he, he's a good man, don't get me wrong, he's a good man. But he, he was better as a Chancellor of the Exchequer at the time. But look what he did with furlough. Paying phone numbers out to companies. And now we're in so much debt because of it, you know. And we've got Mr Punch, you know, off of the Labour... You know, Punch and Judy, you know, he, 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 he's not not going to do anything. He, he's an Angela Rayner. You know, what what are they? They're nothing. Oh. You need a leader. You know, someone with that's got paramarulis that can do something. Well, I think we do need that. Meanwhile, uh, and Peter, thank you very much indeed for that, uh, I had a message in which says, James, I think I've been blacklisted. Uh, phone in as soon as the programme starts and haven't been able to talk to Max for weeks. I don't know who that's from. You didn't say your name. But uh, give me another call and uh, you can have a go. Why not? <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't <laughs> sneeze there. Right, OK, let's get back to your messages here. Uh, James, good morning. Easter eggs are Easter eggs, that's that. That person who said you shouldn't eat a whole Easter egg in one needs to get a grip. In the words of Ian Collins, get in the bin. I'll be munching as many as I can uh, to fit my fat gob, says Andy in South Sea. Um, this one, how would Boris be Prime Minister if he isn't even an MP? Uh, and no, Boris is a charismatic leader, but dependent on the quality of his advisers and ministers to do the actual work. All of that is lacking right now, says Den. I think that's a very good point. Uh, meanwhile, um, Boris was the elected prime minister by the country's vote. Um, anyway, uh, Dan from Kent, we're in that period where major governments, uh, centrist stagnant nation that's bogged down with woke bureaucracy, bring back democracy, not Boris. Well, Boris was voted in as Prime Minister. Anyway, do give me a call, 0344 499 1000. That's the telephone number uh, if you want to get involved in the conversation. Uh, anyway, we will... Uh, bring we'll bring back uh, some more, more of your calls in a second. Right, here we go. Uh, Sean's in Oxford. Sean, good morning. Good morning. How are you, James? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. So, could the Tories be better off with Boris as leader? I voted for Boris. I'm a Conservative. But what I saw, what Boris did to the country, I would never vote Boris as leader again. Oh, dear. What did he do to the country? Well, when did he speak truth? You what? When did he speak truth? Oh, I see. Well, when has a politician ever spoken truth, Sean? Well, that is true, but... If I, mean, you think, if you say I mean, Blair me, talked about um, weapons of mass destruction. That, that was quite yeah. a big lie that has caused quite a legacy. Um, yeah. uh, Gordon Brown said British jobs for British people. Well, we all know where that led. And, and then he yeah. went and signed a treaty and, and let gazillions of people into the country. Um, and then David Cameron said, I'll, I'll tell you uh, if it's a bad deal. He came back from Europe with a terrible deal and then held the referendum that led to the mess. Uh, yeah. Theresa May uh, said that she'd fix the country and, well, she didn't. Um, mm -hmm. Liz Truss um, <laughs> came to, said, I'll grow the economy and then crashed it. I mean, you, what do you want? But there is a policy. Honesty is the best policy. We don't yes. get prime ministers who believe in honesty. Well, for some reason, they seem to have a casual relationship with the truth. And arguably, with Rishi Sunak, we've probably got um, the most truthful Prime Minister we've had. It's just that he doesn't seem to have many leadership qualities and has given Jeremy Hunt the job of being Chancellor. And sadly, yes. Jeremy Hunt uh, couldn't run a bath, let alone the economy. It's James. They're thinking too linear. They have to think out of the box. Correct. 
So what we do about it, Sean? Out of the box thinking. Totally different But then, thinking. what? OK, will we be better off? So, Rishi Sunak, it's not going well. Will we be better off if Keir Starmer becomes Prime Minister? No. But I have an option. I, I'm not too sure. I could be wrong, but Jacob, Jacob Rees-Mogg could be an option. But I, I, I don't know. Yes, he could be an option, try. and then we'll all have to leave the country, Sean. Well, we don't want to do that, do no. we? No. <laughs> I mean, is Jacob Rees-Mogg, you know, very entertaining, a good speaker, uh, all sorts of things. Um, he couldn't yes. lead his way out of a paper bag. We need a Henry V moment. A Henry V moment? What's that? The monologue, Henry V. Oh. You know, that, that's when, when he gives that big... Um, oh, um, no, I think we'd all... No, no, Sean, if that yeah. happened, we'd all lose the will to live. But then how is the vision going to happen if you don't give a, a statement or, or some sort of vision? We need somebody uh, who's got a half an ounce of common sense and we need yeah. to stop the culture wars, uh, we need to stop yes. the class wars. I'm sick and tired of the class wars. No, you you know, we, we, we've, we've correctly, we've stopped people uh, making an awful lot of nasty comments and jokes about people because of their religion, the colour of their skin, mm. their sexual orientation, mm. all of that sort of thing. But we still mm. think that just because somebody happened to pay for their education that it's OK to uh, pillory them and to pull them apart. And we pull apart people because of the success. I mean, all sorts of things we do, which is just stupid and ridiculous. We should be aspiring to have people who are successful and to celebrate success instead of pulling them yeah. down, Sean. Back to basics, then. Then that's the Oh, but then we go back to basics, and then we consider the whole major thing of back to basics, that he was telling us to go back to basics and, and to, you know, be truthful. And there he was, behind the scenes, having diblins with um, Edwina Curry. Yes. And it goes indeed. back to your point of not being able to trust politicians. No, that, that, no I agree, but you asked me a question. I, I did. I did give a few answers. Yeah. Oh, it just shows what a mess we're in. Sean, uh, pick a newspaper for me. Can I pick the Daily Star, please? I did say pick a newspaper as opposed to a, a you know, a tawdry sort of joke comment, but that's OK, because we've got it here. Uh, I say we've got it here. I'm sure I must have. I, I look at the Daily Star for the movie news. I'm a filmmaker. You're a filmmaker? Yes. Why would you look at the Daily Star for that nonsense? Because I'm a filmmaker. I make films, yeah. James. Uh, I'm you... studying films also. Uh, what What film have you made that we've seen? Well, they haven't been distributed yet, but I'm, oh. I'm working on an animation project right now. Oh, then they're not... Oh, no. I was going to go I've down a route that company. I shouldn't go... No. Uh, Sean, a number between 1 and 48, please. Mm, I'll go for 18, please. 18. Yep. Uh, oh. Well, you... Basically, you got um, a big advert for Sainsbury's who've got a piece of roast lamb there. Oh! Here we go. Wonder Dog Callie puts her nose to the test by practising sniffing out post-traumatic stress. Yes, that's her, nice. Her pilot study in Canada has shown that some skilled dogs, including Golden Retriever Ivy, there's an insect oh, picture nice. of Ivy, uh, can be trained to get the scent of trauma by smelling survivor's breath. Right. That's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you, James. Well, no, thank you. Thank you. There we go. Uh, what else is there? Oh, Harrods is selling a bog brush with a fancy stand for an eye-watering £1,360. Toilet rolls can also be sto stored on the Zodiac stand, which is made of brass and is gold-plated. Right. Mm. 1300 mm. quid for a, for a bog brush. Yep. Nice yep. if you can get it. There we go. Everyone's corner store, Harrods. Sean, thank you very much indeed. 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. Is it time to think the unthinkable is what I'm asking? Could the Tories be better off with Boris as leader? There is one free line into the building. We'll take more of your calls and we will be frothing because Dr Roger Givolve is back. That's coming up next on Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Oi, oi, treat girl. 
JK Rowling says, let's just be honest. It's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. minutes, four... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Five forty-six is the time. I can only apologise. It's gone completely bonkers in here. Uh, a lot of you want to have your say, but you're sending messages all over the shop. Uh, it's 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 out of control. Why? Because I've asked you to think the unthinkable. Could the Tories be better off with Boris as leader? Is what I'm asking. Um, and then I, I mentioned that um, this one says I think I've been blacklisted. Um, uh, haven't been able to talk to Max for weeks. Well, maybe if he bothered to call me Mr. Max, he might get through. Is that you, Kevin, in Basingstoke? Yeah, you've proved me wrong, haven't you? Well, you I, I don't know. Don't refer to me as Max. Call me James or Mr Max. I, uh, oh, sorry. Unbelievable. <laughs> anyway, so you send in a complaint. So what, do you, what have you got that puts you to the front of the queue? Because if it's not good, I have to cut you off. Um, I mean, I think Boris would be a hard sell this time round because uh, he said he was going to build 40 new hospitals. Um, we're going to have great trade deals around the world. Um, yeah, but he wasn't given a chance. Well, I know, but I mean, I mean well, you can't say he didn't give him a chance. I mean, he, he got kicked out because he was lying and he he, he um, promoted Pincher, didn't he? Well, he did lots of stupid things. As I said, he had an inability to pick the right people to put around him uh, and he uh, had an interesting relationship with the truth and his downfall was utterly of his own making, which is remarkable in, um, in sort of political history and it will go down in political history as the most extraordinary ability to win elections and to lose your team. Well, yeah, I mean, he achieved nothing. So, I mean, he had an 80-seat majority... And, I mean, he made a fool of himself. And, and threw it all life. away, Kevin. Pardon? He threw it all away. But, given what we've got instead, um, look, uh, the Americans are, uh, look like they're bringing back Donald Trump. Uh, could the Tories be better off with Boris? I mean, have they got anybody better? Well, I mean... I mean who's yeah, better? I, I mean, Donald Trump. I mean, do you who's, think who's better? Who's, who's better than Boris Johnson? 
Who's back? Keir Starmer? No. Oh, what, in the Conservative Party? Yes. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, they've all backed, um, you know, they've all backed uh, the party over the last 14 years. So, I mean, there is... No, but who's, who's else, better so. than Boris Johnson? Who's better? Um, I don't and if know, you yeah. can't come up with somebody better than Boris Johnson, then maybe the Tories would be better off with Boris as leader. Well, I mean, you just sprung that on, on, on me. I mean, yes, it, I have. Know. There we go. Kevin, we're done. Thank you very much indeed for your call, though. Only moving on for time reasons. Terry's in Dover. Terry, thank you for holding. OK, good morning. Uh, good morning, James. James, yes, good morning, Terry. Um, my view on this is, uh, hmm. will, be, will Boris be a better leader? Well, um, obviously... Um, they're facing, what, a 20 25% deficit in, in the polls to Labour. Tory MPs are absolutely desperate. 63, apparently, are going to stand down. Yes. They're desperate to hold on to their seats. They, they fear a wipeout. The, only th the best thing to do is get the polling organisations to do a poll and, and, um, and, 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 and see if, if, if people want Boris. I mean, they can do it, try and do it in the 40% who are undecided, and, and then Labour, and then hardcore Tories or do it across the board just to see what it reveals. I mean, maybe maybe that's that's a good thought because I, I wonder, uh, with the Tory party, um, I mean, I mean, part of the problem is that the Tory party membership is not necessarily representative of the country, so I think they've got that problem. The second point, I think, is that the uh, Tory leadership, if you like, in terms of the alternatives, it's not strong. They don't have a strong field of candidates. No, I think they can only win, James, by going, by going centre ground. One nation Tories. The membership are too right wing. I think one nation uh, uh, conservatives under. But what if they manage to get reform involved and then uh, put Nigel Farage as uh, leader of the Tory party? <laughs> they'll, they'll hold on to the red wall. Um, what, what about the forty percent undecided? How many do you think they're going to win? Well, uh, I mean, maybe Biden? that's maybe that's their only route forward. Uh, Thomas, thank uh, Terry. Sorry, t thank you very much indeed for that. We now go to Thomas and Lincoln. Thomas, we'll have to be really brief, but could the Tories be better off with Boris as leader? No, because if Boris comes back, the Tories will never, ever, ever win another election ever again. Why do you say that? He's he's their greatest election winner. He won twice in London against all the odds, and he won a, a general election um, mandate with uh, you know a majority of eighty. Well, it's all right. It's good for sound bites and waffling his air everywhere. But when it came to the job itself, he didn't know what to do. Everybody was pulling him, broke him, telling him to do this, telling him to do that. Then he had the party gate when everybody was on top of him. They got rid of him. Not trusting, then the job trust on and elected, and then the members didn't have the choice. But what we've done now, they got stuck with Sunak. I mean, the, the, what some people say about Boris Johnson and his leadership is that he was the right leader at the wrong time. Well, he wasn't the right leader. None of it was right because. If COVID, right hadn't, hadn't, if COVID hadn't have happened, I, I reckon he'd probably still be Prime Minister today, Thomas. Oh, but then, then something else would have tripped him up and he'll be in, it'll be, it'll be in the SHI field anyway. Well, then that's, a, that's another thought. Well, there we go, Thomas. Thank you very much indeed uh, for that. However, we must move on. Why? Because time marches on and we must speak to Dr Roger Givolby, CEO of Fair Money. Uh, joins me now, Dr Roger, good morning. Good morning, James. Um, so, apparently you want to talk to us about some big debt. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I've been saying for a very long time that raising interest rates 14 times was not going to curb the kind of inflation that we have, unlike the states, and was going to really wreck the economy and hurt the country. And it does, as I've also said, take some time for the chickens to come home. The only thing and it's done is to bolster... Almost... The only thing it's done is bolster the finances of banks and financial institutions who have yeah, been able to yeah. uh, exacerbate the, uh, the the charges that they make. And, and they're doing very well. Thank you very and much. Line their, and line their pockets. And the, the problem is that as it works itself through, and it's really only starting to work itself through, James, we have almost a billion pounds of extra defaults on borrowing by people. Mm. We have 7 million people, 7 million people falling behind in their household bills. Unsecured debt is now at its highest level uh, in decades, 10% increase in credit card arrears, 
and nearly a million people suffering mental health problems due to money. When you put all of those facts and figures together, it is very clear that um, the failures, if you like, in leadership have led to economic uh, problems which are now leading to financial consequences. When it comes to what the Chancellor should be doing, I've advocated um, lower taxation, simpling taxation, make, uh, making sure that overseas investment is encouraged, um, not politicking with the economy. Jeremy Hunt has done none of those things and I genuinely don't understand why he has pulled all the wrong levers at all the wrong times. Or is it just me uh, and I, um, you know... No, I, just... I, think you're, I think you're right in what you say and I've been advocating again for over a year and a half more than just that. They need to reduce the VAT temporarily fuel duty. But the main thing is taxation and interest rates and not only has uh, Hunt not acted... But it's even galling to have him look at us. Every time I see him, he creeps me out. I keep thinking Bates Motel, Bates Motel. Have him tell us how well we're doing, how he's lowered taxes when everything tank in the land says, no, no, the net effect is he's actually just raised them again. Oh, he's moved and the deck chairs around the... Students. Yeah, he's you've just moved the deck chairs around the deck of the Titanic and yeah, annoyed us all. Yeah, but you've got spineless Sunak behind him backing all of this up. No, no, it's it's really quite irritating. Meanwhile, uh, just very quickly, uh, apparently um, you've got to do some passport checking. Yeah, well, this is a real shocker. Well, it's not a shocker, really. It's a gift from our, our, our brethren across the water in the EU who really appreciated Brexit, and they've come up with this new regulation. So, James, I know you love your European holidays, and, and you and everyone else beware. There's this new rule that if you have a valid British passport, um, but it was issued more than 10 years ago, for reasons I won't go into, not necessary, complicated, they were issuing passports that were valid for 10 years and nine months. So if you've got one of those, and it was it's still valid, but issued more than 10 months ago, even though you registered your passport and your details yeah. online with the airline and everyone else, People are showing up at the border and being refused. I know, and which means that you've got to check the length of uh, your passport validity. There we go. Dr. Roger Give, I'm CEO of Fair Money. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning here on Talk. Just a couple of your texts because Jason has texted and says, James Max is not one for reading out text. I read out loads of text, Jason, you fool. Meanwhile, Dan from Kent says, Thank you, James, for waking me up with a right old laugh. Bring back Boris, whatever next. Whatever next? Oh, I can tell you whatever next. Tonight. At six o'clock, the talk is back. I am back on the talk. I can sense your excitement. Plus, I'll be back tomorrow from five for early breakfast. Meanwhile, talk today is next with Jeremy Carl and Nicola Thorpe. How are you going to stop the votes? This is an international problem. How's that going for your party? I'm a millennial. You're a Victorian, I think. <laughs> this helps weather people. I'm going to help the vet's office. <laughs> Go I'm Jeremy Kyle. And I'm Nicola Thorpe. Welcome to Talk Today. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Oi, 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 treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kingston City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid 